So everyone is talking about the ship collision that took place in Baltimore. Horrible event. A ship went into a bridge, caused the bridge to collapse. And everyone is talking about it. Uh, so I did my best in order to find the two more interesting things that stood out. And it's unlikely that the mainstream media is going to report on them too much. Uh, one of them is the president of the United States, which um, was talking about going on that bridge, commuting on the train. The only problem is that that particular bridge doesn't have a railway. So, um, obviously, you know, this can be handed down to the fact that the United States president is a little bit more vintage. right? So, being more vintage, you, you do expect some slip-ups. But here's the thing. Maybe it's like the politicians, and this is not a Joe Biden thing. I, I think it's a, it's also a Kamala Harris thing, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if many politicians are doing it. M making these lies. Making these lies to look good for the camera, isn't it? It's like, oh, yes, I, I when I was a child, I also went to the civil rights, and I was like, freedom, freedom, you know? I mean, she wasn't there, but it does sound good when she says it, right? Or, or Hillary Clinton, and I was under sniper fire. Romanian politicians aren't like this. It's, why make up lies when you don't need to? Like, why did he have to mention that, yes, I, I was on that bridge? Like, it's already a terrible event. So may as well just not inject yourself into the scene. Like, you don't have to actually be in every single historical event that took place. It's, uh, did you notice this with American politicians? Don't they do this all the fucking time? All the fucking time, it's like when there's something happening, I was there. I was literally there. It's like, no, you weren't. Especially in the age of the internet when it's so easy to fact check. And, and I know, like, a lot of people are going, well, yeah, but, like, Joe Biden is... I'm not talking about him. It's just one example. It's like, given the fact that I don't follow American politics that closely, I don't go and watch every single interview, the, the fact that the very little I follow, I, I keep catching politicians making up these bizarre lies where they're like, yes, I was there, I was in the... Why do they do it, though? Like, does it bring votes? I mean, I, I generally don't understand. Like, like okay, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how it would be. Let's say, you know, I'm a black person living in the United States, and uh, the vice president is like, yes, I was I was at the civil rights. I was... And, you know, like, like, you're, you're just opening yourself up to be fact-checked and looking like an absolute idiot when they're realizing that you weren't there. Was it like Hillary Clinton that wrote uh, letters to NASA to, to allow female astronauts? Like, like these bizarre statements that, again, they, they're so easy to fact check. Uh, I think like the reason they're doing it because in the era of the television, they would have gotten away with them. So they're, they're like just used to behaving like this. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a team of PR specialists that are trading them on what to say. Okay, so that was like the first thing that I had to say regarding this incident. The second one has to do with the uh, Minister of Transportation. I mean, you want to hear what he has to say, right? Like, this is a transportation issue. Uh, so, let's see what went wrong. Sorry, he's not a minister. He's a secretary. Okay, the Secretary of Transportation. Stop, stop correcting me. You know, listen to the spirit of what I say, not the words. Me not speaking English. But, you know, like, this was a transportation thing. Honestly, it's not his fault because he wasn't uh, captain of the ship. So let's see what he has to say about it. If an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or there would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, but that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. Okay, so racismus. Racismus is to blame. Um, like, tens of thousands of ships have went under that bridge, no problem. But because of racism, the evil racism, you know, it waited for the Democrats to be in power, but more specifically for Mr. Buttigieg to be the transportation secretary, so, so that then it enacted to make him look bad. And, and again, you know, I, I find it difficult to understand, like, how can you have this smiley face when you're talking about a tragedy? Like, I, I'm not asking him to be like Obama pissing his eyes every single time he's on television. Um, but, but, like, at least have some common decorum. You know, like, be a little bit more somber. Now, like, now is the time 
to have the poker face, even if you don't care, even if you're not from the area, even like, okay, fine, but like, have the poker face, because there may be people that were affected by the tragedy, and they're watching the television. But anyway, right, uh, here, here's the interesting take. I found interesting parallels between racismus and saying that it was the will of God. It sounds strange when you put it like this, but, but think about it, right? Like, in the past, and, and they still do it in my country to a certain degree, when something bad happened, and you don't want to blame someone, you would say, well, it's the will of God. In other words, like, there's nothing we can do about it, you know? So, so why is it the will of God? Like, well, we upset God somehow. We didn't pray enough. We didn't donate enough money to the church, right? So what is the solution? Like, the solution isn't to actually investigate the problem, find out who was accountable, punish them, and see how in the future we can avoid this from happening again. No, that, that is a difficult solution. The correct solution is to pray harder. Donate more money to the church. Uh, make sure that uh, you, you take everyone to mass, right? Isn't it the same with racismus, though? It's like, who's to blame? Racismus. Okay, what, what can we do to stop it? Uh, donate more money to NGOs. Uh, vote Democrat. Make sure that you get educated by reading the news every single time and, you know, stay up in touch with the, all the microaggressions and make absolutely sure. It literally is. Like, think about it. And ironically, it's like a new religion. It's like a new religion where, where racism is to blame for everything. Like, name me one thing, one thing in the world that can't be blamed on racism. Just one. Every single tragedy, they, you, you can make the connection, and they do. Like, think about the last tragedy you remember, and Google it, racism, and you'll find articles in the media that explains to you how that particular tragedy is tied to racism. Some way or some other form. Even the pharmaceutical industry is tied to racism. And if it's not tied to racism, then it's tied to sexism. But it's some form of ism. It's, it's responsible for all the evils that mankind has to offer. And in order to... To fix all the evils that mankind has to offer, you need to vote Democrat. And, of course, you need to uh, give the government more power so that they can tax you more. And it was the same with the church back in the day of the medieval time. I'm talking about the medieval time period where the church actually had power. It was like, well, the crops aren't growing. Why aren't the crops growing? You know, like maybe there was a conflict or, or there weren't enough fertilizers or there was drought. No, it's, it's God. God just... Didn't like you. So why did God not like me? Because you didn't pray enough. You need to pray harder. Donate more money to the church. Right? It's like the Turks are invading. Why are the Turks invading? Well, because the leader, you know, the voivod decided not to pay the the tax. The, not to pay the jizya. Okay, well, he's not to blame, right? Because the Turks invade. No, it's, it's an act of God. God. God is upset. Why? Because you didn't pray. Donate more money to the church. Give the priest more power. It's literally the same shit. Anyway, um, I, I am curious though, like, is there ever a politician in America that actually assumes responsibility? Like, like in, in Eastern Europe, the, the, this is why I'm culture shocked by this. In Eastern Europe, like, when you have a tragedy, like, sometimes, yes, you do have the politician, like the Ministry of Transportation, who will actually say, yeah, like, we should have foreseen this, it is our fault. Here's a list of changes that we propose. And people are understanding because they know, like, okay, well, it wasn't the Minister of Transportation himself that gave the A-OK -okay for that ship to leave port. He wasn't the captain. He was, right? So people are understanding. It's like, okay, well, they did investigate. They realized what went wrong. And it's like, they're going to do better. But they're not blaming it on racism. My God. Can you imagine if racism uh, didn't exist in the United States? Who would the Democrats blame? Huh? Let me know what you guys think, though. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.